Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, in a moment, we're going to get into today's episode of Boston Blackie. Uh, after a word from our sponsors, we're going to fast forward a bit to get to, uh, in the show's history, to get to the first Christmas program they did, which uh, originally aired on December the 17th of 1947. And the title is Blackie, Santa Claus, and the Stolen Rings. Before the show starts, I want to let you know about an offer from our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com slash try now to browse through their amazing and ever-expanding catalog of audiobooks and audio programs. The selection I'm recommending for this month is the Hound of the Baskervilles. This is a classic story that's been told many times, but my favorite adaptation is the Big Finish audio drama starring Nicholas Briggs and Richard Earle. Briggs, who was also the executive producer for Big Finish, wanted to tell a faithful adaptation as he was tired of all of the adaptations which messed with the story. And truly, Big Finish's adaptation is faithful, it's brilliantly acted, and it's a great way to experience the classic story. However, you can choose any audiobook that Audible offers for your free trial. Just go to audible.com slash try now to start your subscription today. Just because we're going out to have Christmas dinner together. Don't forget, you're driving an automobile, not a sleigh. Now, Blackie, okay. don't tell me you object to Inspector Faraday's being full of Christmas spirit on Christmas no. Eve. No, Mary, I just object to his voice. <laughs> Very amusing. Blackie, yeah, I know now what I should have given you for Christmas. A sense of humor. If I didn't already have one, how could I tolerate you? Well, somebody should give you both a book of instructions on how to get along. Yeah, especially he. Him. <laughs> you know we're only kidding, Mary. We are. Stop that man. Stop that man. What? Hey, did you hear that, Blackie? Stop him. Oh, not Stop him. I see it. Stop him. He's chasing a man up the street. Step on it, Faraday. We can catch him. Don't tell me what to do. Pull up to the curb now, Inspector, and I can grab him. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Okay, we just passed him. Wait, wait. Don't jump till I've slowed down a little. Well, hurry up, or he'll pass us. Now, Blackie, be careful. You mean Blackie, be quick. Well, no, look out. Here goes. All right, you. <laughs> you hold a right hand, Axe. Let me, man. Let go of me. Sure, as soon as the shopkeeper. You just robbed him, see? And here he comes. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. He took four diamond rings out of my store. I... Now, give me those rings. Give them to me. I don't have no rings at yours, Max. Oh, yes, you do. Right in your pocket here. I've watched you since you ran out of the store. You couldn't have given them to anybody. I'll hold them while you say... Yeah, like... Okay. Bye. Yeah, they're not here. No, because I didn't take that to see. Well, where are my rings? I want those rings. So go find them. Well, I got news for you. You ain't gonna find them on me. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. <laughs> He took the rings out of the tray on the counter here, Inspector Faraday. You said that. Yes, but he did. He took the rings and ran out that door. Oh, sorry, Mr. Stacy. Unless I find the stolen rings on this guy here, what can I do about it? Nothing, Faraday. Absolutely nothing. Well, Why have you? Look, Blackie, you and this copper pal of yours searched me twice. Out on the street and here in the store. The rings ain't on me. But they are. You took them. I saw you. If I took a Mac, where are they now? 
I have a pretty good idea. I hope it's better than pretty good, Blackie, because this guy's made four rings to a pretty good disappearing act. And I know how, too. Yeah. He threw them away when he saw he was being chased. That's a lie. Yes. Yes, he could have done that. He could have. I'd like to bet he didn't. Oh, go ahead, bet. Only let me alone. It's Christmas Eve. I got some place to go. I'll say you have. To headquarters, where I'm going to hold you until I find out who you are. And if you want it for anything else. The only thing I want it for is Christmas Eve dinner. Hey, Blackie. Yeah? You're supposed to be such a genius. What happened? Friend, before I'm through with you, for your Christmas dinner, I'm going to make you eat those words. All visitors back behind the ropes, please. The passengers are coming down the gangplank now. Hey, God. God. Yes, what is it? Uh, my name's Clark. I'm here to pick up a guy who don't speak English. Say not a word of it. Would you help me find him? You know what he looks like? Yeah, yeah, he's a big guy, about 6'6", six, six, maybe 250 pounds. His name's Abby. Well, there's a big guy coming down the gangplank now with a sign on him. Maybe that's the guy. Oh, yeah, he looks like the guy I want. Hey, Abby! Abby! Hey, he's coming over, so I guess he understands his name, even if he doesn't understand English. Yeah, I guess so. Thanks. No trouble at all. All visitors behind the ropes, please. Right. Sanya Abbey, Bolo Grino, Ratsum Clark. Ratsum Clark. Brag. Sitab Abbey, you big jerk. Brag. Ratsum Clark. All right, all right, all right. You don't know what I'm talking about, Abbey, because you don't know a word of English. But you use a gun good, pretty good, they tell me. And if you do, we'll be speaking the same language, all right. <laughs> Martin, where are they? Listen, Clark, I told you I don't have them. You're lying. I know you took them out of the store because I saw you run out of the place and beat it up the street. Well, if you'd hung around, you'd have seen me nabbed and hauled off the police headquarters. If you were caught by the police, you'd still be in jail. Not me. I ain't got no record, remember? Blackie and that cop Faraday took me down there, checked on me, and let me go. All right, you ran into trouble, but you got out of it. Now, where are those rings? I ain't got them. You em. took them out of the store, so why haven't you got them? Calm down and give me a chance to tell you. I'll give you just ten seconds to hand over those rings. Ah. I spotted the jewelry store and cased it for you, and I don't try to cross it. Hey, now, look, don't get tough, or maybe I'll just leave the rings lay right where they are. Oh, you will. <laughs> yeah, I will. Hey, let go of me. Sure. After I've taught you a little lesson. Huh? Hey, Abby. That totem. Brantage Hey, who's that monster? He's a character wanted for murder in Europe. A friend of mine sent him to me for Christmas. Friend, huh? He don't understand no English, but he's tough. I'm going to prove that to you. Yeah? Abby. There's Bruno. Abby, lead a lock. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, call this guy off. Call him off. Yeah. Yeah. Call him off. Yeah. I almost broke my jaw, Clark. Abby. Struve, Gondolak. Yes, Ragan. You lay off now, Martin. That is, unless you still have the idea you're not telling me what you did with those rings. Sure, I'll tell you. When the jeweler was chasing me, I see a Santa Claus up the street ringing his bell and collecting stuff. So? So when I passed him just before Blackie grabbed me, I threw the rings in a big iron pot the Santa Claus had. Nobody saw me, and I know how to get them back. You better. No, I thought for a minute there that you was going to be the only guy in history who gave Santa Claus a present. Mm. Blackie, what's yeah. the matter with you and Inspector Faraday? Everybody else in this restaurant is having fun, but look at you two. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mary. And I don't like what that guy Joe Martin did to us this evening. I don't like the fact that we had nothing on them in the file at headquarters. No, eat your dinner, both of you. All right. Well, this is Christmas Eve, and we're supposed to be having a party. When we let Martin go, my appetite went with him. Well, Blackie, what did he do with those rings? Who knows? He took them according to the jeweler, but he got rid of them somehow without being seen. Apparently, he didn't throw them away because we searched the street. No. When you two see Santa Claus, tell him that what you want for Christmas is an explanation of how Martin got rid of those rings. Hey, wait a minute, Mary. That's not a bad thought. Hmm? Huh? Huh? No. 
I know how those rings were hidden and why they haven't been found. Oh, now, wait a minute, Blackie. What's Santa Claus got to do with that? Martin gave the rings to Santa Claus. What? Blackie, haven't you heard? There ain't no Santa Claus. There was one ringing a little bell on the corner near the jewelry store. Yes, and Martin passed him just a few seconds before I caught up with him. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but how would Martin give those rings to Santa Claus without Santa Claus knowing it? By tossing them in his collection bucket, Faraday. Come on, we're getting out of here. Mikey, that Santa Claus won't still be there. No, but all those street corner St. Nick's are working for the Welfare Society. Yeah, so? I'll call them, and they'll tell me where we can find the guy. You, you, you think Santa Claus still has the rings, huh? Yep. If Martin hasn't found him by now and taken them back, in which case we'll find Santa Claus has been clipped. <laughs> Joe Martin, Clark. Come in. It's me. Never mind the introduction. Where are the rings? Well, keep two-ton Tony from the bed away from me. I got the rings right here. Well, where I want them is right here in my hand. Sure, sure. Here you are. Thanks. <laughs> Have any trouble with Santa Claus? Yeah, no. Nah, the plan worked great. Good. <laughs> You'll never even be able to tell anybody I was there. <laughs> Be a good little boy. And I take you in to see Santa Claus, Faraday, and maybe he'll bring you a nice little promotion. Yeah. Look, he's an off-duty Santa Claus right now. I know. According to the Welfare Society, his name is Henry James. How many more flights are there? Only this is a fine way to spend Christmas Eve. Yeah, we may spend from now till New Year's working on a murder case, Faraday, if the welfare agency was right. Yeah. And another guy phoned for information about the same Santa Claus just before we did. I know. Oh, finally, here's the door. Yeah, if, he's, if he's in the kind of trouble you claim he is, he won't be in any condition to answer the door. Don't remind me. You and your theories. You had no right to think he's dead. I hope I'm wrong. But I'll guarantee you, if he's not dead, he's tied up or unconscious or both. Yeah, well, if you're so smart, you have that all figured out. You ought to be smart enough to know the only way we'll get in is to open the door ourselves. Brilliant deduction, Inspector. Yeah, that's all mine. I'll try the door to see if it's locked. Blackie, how do you think up such wonderful ideas? Uh-oh. Somebody's opened it for us. Well, sorry to keep you gentlemen waiting so long. I was taking a nap. Are you Henry James? Yes. The Santa Claus on the corner near that jewelry store that was robbed earlier this evening? Yes, yes, I am. Well, I'm Boston Blackie, and this is Inspector Faraday of the police. Oh, how do you do? How are you? I saw you cast the thief, Blackie. You did? Yeah. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, James. Yeah? Did you have a visitor a little while ago? A visitor? Yeah. Oh, I had no visitor. No one came here and held you up to get back the four stolen rings he tossed in your collection? Why, why no, Inspector Faraday. No one's been here. And my collection bucket's right here on the table. It's untouched. This collection bucket of yours hasn't been touched, James? Certainly not. Blackie, according to you, Joe Martin tossed the rings in the Santa Claus collection bucket. This is it. I know. According to you, Martin called the Welfare Society and found out where this particular Santa Claus lived. Somebody asked about Mr. James before I called. You don't say. But Mr. James says nobody's been here. Well, he ought to know. And you ought to know how ridiculous you are. Mm. I've looked through this collection bucket and there are no rings here. Nothing but coins. Santa Claus wasn't held up here. No rings were ever dropped in his bucket out on the street. Blackie, how wrong can a guy get? Now, back to Boston Blackie. Joe Martin steals four rings from a jewelry store. Just before he is caught by Boston Blackie, he runs down the street and tosses the rings into the collection box of a street corner Santa Claus. Later at Santa's room, he apparently recovers the jewelry. But when Blackie and Inspector Faraday come to see Santa... Santa, whose real name is Henry James, insists that his collection box has not been touched. As we return to our story, Blackie continues his questioning of Santa Claus. Look, Mr. James. Uh, Yeah, Blackie. Faraday has gone back to headquarters because he thinks I'm wrong. Maybe he's right. But I still say that Martin tossed those rings into your collection bucket. Uh, Believe me, Blackie, the collection is right here. It's untouched. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I was about to take it to the welfare society, and as I said before, no one's been here to see me. No one but you and the inspector. You are sure you're not playing Santa Claus to Joe Martin? Working with a thief? I should say not. I don't know why you should think so. Because when I called the Welfare Society to get your name and address, I was told there'd been another call inquiring about you just a half an hour before. Is that so? I think that was Joe Martin calling to find out where he could find you. Well, no Joe Martin came here, Blackie. In fact, nobody did. And you've been right here in your room ever since you came back to get out of your Santa Claus suit? Yeah, yeah, Blackie. Every minute, every... No, 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 wait, now, wait. Uh, I was out for just a minute on, on the telephone at the end of the hall. Who was on the phone and when was this? Oh, about, uh, about 20 minutes ago. It was a man at the Welfare Society asked me if I'd collected a lot of money tonight. Did the man say who he was? No, no, just that he was an officer of the society. I, I wouldn't have known him if he had given his name. I worked for the society only at Christmas time. That's it, then. While you were on the phone talking to Martin or some friend of his, either Martin or an accomplice slipped in here and got back those stolen rings. Isn't that possible? Well, yes, yes, it is. My, my back was to the hall while I was on the phone, and uh, the door to this room was partially open. And thanks to what you've just told me, Mr. James, this case is practically closed. <laughs> now, Mary, don't stuff me so... <laughs> So full of pillows that I can't stand oh, up. Oh, Blackie, you want to look like a big, fat, jolly Santa Claus, don't you? <laughs> yes, but not like an overstuffed chair. <laughs> there. You're well padded and your coat's buttoned up. <laughs> now, try on your beard and let's see how you look. <laughs> say, if I get clipped with this thing on my face, you might say my assailant is beating around the bush. Oh, Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> how do I look? With your cap on, I'd never know you, and that would be all right with me. <laughs> Well, uh, you think that uh, Joe Martin will know me? Oh, I don't think so. He doesn't know you as well as I do to begin with. I wish you wouldn't try this, though, Blackie. It's the only thing I can do, since Faraday wouldn't give me any help but Martin's address. Well, in a way, he can't be blamed for not offering you any help. This isn't a murder case. And besides, you've been wrong all along. According to him, that is. Well. Well, uh, young lady, hand me that sack of phony presents, and uh, I'll put this case in the bag. Faraday, homicide. Hello, Inspector. This is Mary Wesley. All right. Let's have it, Miss Wesley. Uh, have what? Blackie's newest theory on how to make me waste my time. Blackie's newest plan isn't going to waste any of your time, Inspector. In That's fact, new. you may not have enough time to get down there and help him. Get down where? Well, after you gave him that fellow Martin's address, he got dressed in a Santa Claus suit and went down there alone. What's he bothering Martin for? Well, we haven't he... got anything on him. Well, Blackie is positive that Martin retrieved those stolen rings from Santa Claus's collection bucket. And I'm positive Blackie's positively out of his mind. Well, anyway, I think you ought to go over to Martin's right away. You know the way Blackie's little schemes sometimes get him into trouble. This time I hope he gets himself into plenty of trouble. Well, gee... If maybe it'll get him out of my hair. <laughs> I got to hand it to you, Clark. Yeah. It was a slick trick calling that Santa Claus at his house and keeping him on the phone while I sneaked in and got the rings out of his collection. Uh, it was just luck that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> what would we have done, Martin, if he'd taken his collection right down from his corner to the Welfare Society? Yeah, that would have been just too bad, I guess. Uh, too bad for you. Why? Well, because my boy Abby knows how to use a gun as well as his fist. Hey, look, you got the rings back, didn't you? Yeah, sure, over there on the table. I came to your room to be sure I got him back. Ah. But Abby's going to be my chief assistant from now on in charge of guys who make mistakes. Understand? Okay, I understand. But it's sure going to be tough working with a guy who can't speak English or understand it. I don't want him to be easy to work with. If you can't talk to him, you can't get friendly with him. Trigger men shouldn't have friends. They can... Hey, wait a minute. Who's there? <laughs> Santa Claus! Get rid of him, Martin. Okay. Merry Christmas, son. Merry Christmas. Hey, fat so beat it. The same Santa, Martin? No. Beat it, Mac. You got the wrong house. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas, my boy. Can you spare... Beat it, I said. Now, wait a minute, Martin. He's collecting for the poor. Let him come in a minute. Okay. Come on, Santa. Come on in. <laughs> Thank you. And a Merry Christmas. Uh, 
What do you want from us, Santa? Oh, anything you care to give. Just anything to help make it a Merry Christmas for the poor. Uh, like those four diamond rings on the table there. How about letting me give that beer to you as a touch? Hey, no! Hey! It's Boston Black. I thought it was some kind of gag. Watch out, he's going to swing that sack he's carrying. Oh. You'll have to swing it faster than that. Yeah. Martin, you really flattened him. Oh. Now get him up on his feet. I've got a gun on him. Sure. Oh, come on, Blackie, get up. Uh, thanks. Hey, what are you going to do with him? You can't kill him here. I'm going to turn him over to Abby and let Abby take him for a little walk. Hey, Abby. This is pretty dangerous, Clark. Be a whole lot more dangerous if Blackie stays alive. Don't forget he's seen the rings and I'm wanted for murder out west and Blackie can describe me. I sure can. Hey, Abby. What's the matter with that big hulk? Sanya, Abby. You let Doug Jaller off your sada, Nugula. Sena. Okay, Martin, he knows. <laughs> Where, Sena? <laughs> Just what kind of language is that? Quiet, Blackie. All you have to know is that Abby's taking you for a walk with a gun in your back. Oh, that's pleasant. Abby, Uka. Sena. Come on, Clark. Have Abby get this guy out of here. The cops may not be far behind him. We'd better wait till those carol singers outside go away. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now, they won't suspect anything. I'll have Abby take them out right now. But what about those carol singers? They're just outside the house. Now, tell Abby to keep a gun on Blackie and shoot him if he opens his mouth. Hey, I got a better idea. Make Blackie sing and keep him singing. Then it'll seem like he's happy going down the street with Abby. Yeah, good idea. Uh, I'm really not in good voice this evening, gentlemen. You won't be in good condition when Abby gets through with you. Quiet, Martin. Hey, Abby. Sort of read some blacky lingo. Finis duda. Bang, bang. <laughs> bang, bang. Thank you, it's him glad. All right, all right. Go on, get going. Start singing, Blackie. Go on, start singing. A command performance, huh? Oh, I didn't know you had such an appreciation for my talent. So long, Blackie. So long. So long. I said keep singing, Blackie. If you stop once more, Abby will shoot. I won't stop then. So long. So long, sucker. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Jingle bell, jingle all the way. All what fun is to ride in the one horse open sleigh. Give me help. I can't yelp, but I'm on a spot. Where we'll go, I don't know, but I know I'll be shot. Hey, that guy when I pass, jump him fast. Oh, listen to my squawk. Hey, listen to that I have squawk. to sing this silly thing, because he'll kill me if I talk. Hey, I don't think that what guy... What you shit. speak to him is Greek. He doesn't know a thing. Come on, let's jump the guy. Watch out for Gunny. I Hi. just Hi. pass you by Hi. and let you hear me sing. All right, I'll get him. Get him. Here, let me out of him, fellas. I can take care of him myself now. Hey, nice punch, mister. Nice going yourself, fellas. For understanding those words I was singing. Okay, but at first we thought you were nuts. Hey, here comes the police car. Hey, Blackie, you all right? Well, Faraday, you decided to give me some help after yeah, all. yeah. When Miss Wesley phoned me and said you were going through with your crazy plan, I thought I'd better get down here and keep you out of trouble. Who's the big guy on the sidewalk? The guy working for Martin and his buddy who was going to give me a one-way ride into the country. Oh, great. He's safe here. Let's go into the house and get Martin and his friend who wanted to go out west. Yeah, come on. Oh, look. There they go making a break for us. Yeah. Well, let's break up that break. Stop, you. Stop in the name of the law. They're trying to shoot their way out. This will stop him. That made him suck. Come on, let's grab him. Watch out, Blackie. That guy's got a gun. You're not going to get a chance to use it, though, boy. I've got this one. Take care of the other one, Faraday. Don't tell me what to do. Okay. Okay, okay, lay off, copper. No more, Blackie, no more. Okay, Martin, no more. If you give me those rings. Clark's got them. Come on, you, Clark. Let's have them. Yeah. Okay, here they are. Here. One, two, three, four. They're all there, Faraday. Good. And Martin, Clark, and their pal Abby are all yours. Wow. You take these guys back to my squad car, will you, Blackie? After this chase, I'm tired. Oh, great, old man. Yeah. I go all out to catch these guys, and you're the one who's all in. <laughs> Good morning, Turkey. Uh, Inspector Faraday? Yeah, a little bit, Miss Worthy. Mm-hmm. And Blackie? 
How about you? Oh, I'll have more of everything, Mary. <laughs> yeah, if, if turkey were brain food, I'd say you had plenty of room for it, Blackie. Now, Inspector, this is Christmas Day. Blackie must promise not to fight. <laughs> Mary, he's still upset because the case we just worked on didn't involve a murder. <laughs> you, you talk as if I like murder, Blackie. You, you must do. like it, Inspector. The way you've murdered that turkey. Mm. Very droll. You mm, mean very drool, don't you? <laughs> now she's telling me what I mean. The thing must be contagious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Inspector, I'm glad the stolen rings case wasn't more complicated than it turned out to be. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad we got it solved before Christmas was over. <laughs> me too. Well, Inspector, men generally put a ring on a finger. But because Clark and Martin stole some rings, we put the finger on them. Hello, everybody. This is Dick Calmer. Every week after we finish one of our Boston Blackie shows, I indicate what I hope we'll be doing the following week. Uh Uh-huh. Look, Blackie... Now, just a second. This time, it's going to be a little different. Uh, Blackie, what's with you? What is going on here? Just a minute, Faraday. Please. Mm -hmm. Friends, I said I'm not going to tell you what we will be doing next week. That's good. I'm going to tell you what we hope you will be doing. Very confusing. Isn't almost everything confusing to you, Inspector? Uh, Listen, everybody. What for? Now, patience, Faraday, patience. Next week, I hope you and everyone you know and love will be enjoying the best holiday season you ever had. Yeah, now... That the next year will be a great year for all of you. Could I say something, Blackie? You, Inspector, can say anything, and you probably will. All I say is, Merry Christmas to our listeners, Blackie. Merry Christmas to them all. Well, genius, how about one of your usual taglines? <laughs> Not this time, Faraday. Mm-hmm. All I say to everybody from Mary Wesley and all our cast is, until our next meetings, season's greetings. <laughs> Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, poor Abby, undone by the fact that he only spoke a fake radio language. Blackie's stunt would be kind of hard to pull off today. Because when, you know, everybody walking around with earbuds these days, even if you've got the uh, volume down, you're not going to make out too much of the words when someone's singing Christmas carols. You're just going to be kind of waving, oh, I. Overall, this was a fun episode. It's really kind of a lot pre-holiday uh, treat. It's a fairly simple case, but with some nice scenes that show Blackie and Faraday getting along. All right, well, that will do it for today's episode of Boston Blackie. Be sure and join us back here tomorrow for uh, the 1959 uh, Christmas episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of